In front of you here is a Shimano disc brake. Its part number is BR-R8070. And uh, I'm gonna show you in this video what's involved in doing a brake bed change. I have obviously removed the old brake beds. You need these seen once or at least uh, comprehend what's uh, involved here in order to shop for the new brake beds. So on the brake bed, which I'm gonna show you how it removes uh, from the brake caliper, you can see these numbers L03A and it says resin and yes one of them is left-sided l the other one is right-sided they obviously go together meaningfully in one fixed direction this way the two brake pads facing each other eventually and the brake rotor in between so these need a replacement because they are super duper thin i want to show you how thin they are there and this is the thinnest point here they always always going to wear unevenly because the leading edge is gonna wear more than the trailing edge you can see there's more thickness here than here and on this side I started biting this is the leading edge on this one the leading edge here the pad the pad material has worn down so much that the backing plate there you can see that shiny little corner on it started contacting the brake rotors so bad situation uh, the brake rotor can be seriously this one here in the background can be seriously gouged out because the hardness of the backing metal here is such that it's gonna chew up the brake rotor so the pad material is nice and soft that's the one that should be contacting the brake rotor only so the same again uh, the leading edge wears more than the trailing edge and that's fine there's really nothing that you can do about it or anybody so my <coughs> I'm just gonna put them on the ground uh, so my new brake pads come in box looking like so new brake pads and this is l05a i'm going to show you the compatibility chart and what these numbers mean there are two ways you can get the exact brake part number for your specific brake one way is to look at the physical evidence the dig up your brake pads from your existing brake caliper whatever is mounted on your bicycle take a look at the part number on that brake pad and go with it but uh, there might be optional other brake pads available for the brake caliper that's mounted on your bicycle. Another way to look at it is to find your brake caliper model. So right here, I'm on Shimano's web page here. I'm going to include this link in the description box below. And I clicked on the compatibility chart, which is fairly recent. 2023 april 28 when they last updated this and this is all clickable i'll show you how just, this works you can scroll down here and find your brake caliper model number i know that mine is the third box here this one here and i'm just gonna click on it and yes it has a resin brake pad and it's got a narrow disc uh, brake rotor for it so I'm gonna click on my exact number alas so this is BR-R 8070 now there's an additional dash F here because this is the front in the image here there's also a rear that gets a dash R and on it you can see everything that goes uh, to it what kind of brake hose or whatever and here are the brake pads without fin or with fin two versions of resin and uh, and metal brake pads as well with or without fin for optional so these are the two standard ones and i replaced it with mine it's confirmed here is an l type brake pad and everything else you ever wanted to know there is one other link here i'm gonna click on this one search in specifications and it's gonna tell you here front and rear both variations uh, what kind of uh, uh, brake levers or shifters uh, go with it other compatibility issues here okay so 
everything you need to know about your brake caliper that's mounted on your bicycle and what kind of brake pad it takes. Here again, the brake pads are listed pretty clearly. This is Shimano's website. This is their compatibility chart. I'm gonna include that link in the description box below the video. And on the left-hand side here, I selected brake pad lineup. So that's what you see up top there. Now you're gonna to have to match the brake pad shape. And I don't have a four piston system, so not that. I have a two piston system, so I don't have a B type or a G type brake pad because these have these little tabs on them, none of these. This is something like what I have. It's either J type or L type. They look identical to me. Both are narrow type. So let's zoom in a little bit. And you can see the part numbers, L03. I think I have L type because that's what came out from the original. So L03A-RF is my part number. And uh, you can see its uh, characteristics here, uh, modulation and power and its durability and fading and whatever silence. So this is my replacement pad here, uh, the 05A, and this is the old one, 03A. It's a one digit difference. So uh, modulation, five stars, five stars, power, four stars, four stars, uh, durability five stars five stars stars asterix one so I'm gonna look at that one in a sec so everything as you can see the stars are exactly the same thing uh, for uh, my type and uh, my uh, type of brake pad and if I come down to my brake caliper which is BRR where is it this one BRR 8070 hydraulic brake caliper so both options are standard and there's an optional uh, uh, not resin brake pad but a metallic brake pad available which uh, which could be dry weather only like race condition i don't know something like that because it's more powerful so i'm replacing a similar brake seal to a similar brake seal what's the difference what is this asterisk one so let's go down to the bottom of the chart here zero five pad is more durable than zero three pad in the same type by 40 percent cool so my new brake pad with this zero five part number is going to be 40 percent more durable durability here we're looking there you get the idea so five out of five stars in both cases but it's just going to be more durable you really have to watch your find your brake model numbers and have to find your brake pad shapes to make sure you have the right part and that's where you need to start with the brake pad take out the old one way before it starts falling apart or making squealy noises look at the part number on it and you're gonna have to find it to see what your options are and uh, go from there so it's an upgraded compound the L03A the old one the L03A is an older part and L05A is its uh, matching newer compound the I don't know if these fins if, if these fins are any different ah, they look the same okay so that has not been updated so you can see in the new compound here you can see the embedded metallic fibers you can also see that it's beveled here and you can see the thicknesses of them so way thicker than the here's the old one there uh, you can see them side by side so this is how it looks like so new brake pads and old brake pad here so this needs to be discarded because the because the packing plate has been contacting the uh, brake rotor making a loud noise so between these two components this spring gets installed i'll show you how and this spring comes with the new brake pads That's the old one so this is all inside the package. So paper bag, two brake pads, this spring clip, that's all inside 
the box there so tools needed you need a flat tipped screwdriver to remove this pin and you need, you need a tweezers or a whatever works to remove this small retaining clip here and this is the spring plate from the old one as this gets covered in brake dust or uh, is subject to severe heating if you're going a lot of downhill whatever this can deform or get crudded or ugly or whatever so they just include a new one you know, with the new brake pads so I'm gonna install that one the space for it looks like this when it's cleaned up and uh, again bicycle is upside down and this is a giant bicycle and it's a hydraulic brake and what I'm going to do is reset this the old brake pads are worn down and these piston here and piston here are getting closer and closer and closer as the pad material is being worn away so they need to be pushed back left and right because the new thickness of the brake pad and the brake rotor they won't all seem to fit unless you push the pistons back into the caliper body so this takes a little bit of time to do this on both sides so i'm going to use these new brake pads here to make enough space inside the uh, brake caliper so one of them will fit in right away and the other one you're gonna have to kind of make space for it some in a, in a motion that looks somewhat like that because now I'm gonna operate the brake lever and you can see what happens you see both brake pistons move forward and uh, make less space actually there's no space for the brake rotor so if I did this with the worn brake pads then the calipers just come out even closer i don't want to make my life too too hard but you get the idea they are advancing forward and uh, so put one brake rotor uh, sorry one brake pad in and it doesn't matter that how the brake rotor doesn't fit here just yet and uh, trying to move it doesn't matter at this point which one is the left side and which one is the right side I'm just trying to make space there for the brake rotor like so so that's about as far back the brake pistons can possibly go and this will provide enough space between them when they are mounted properly there I'm trying to show you the space where the brake rotor will eventually fit without an issue there if you get the idea so now next thing to look at which one is the left side and which one is the right side of the bicycle what I do with left side right side so bicycle is upside down but when I'm grabbing the handlebar left hand grabs that side right hand grabs this side because I'm sitting in front of the bicycle like so so that's my right foot that's my left foot left hand right hand whatever so the one labeled L went here and the one labeled R went here very straightforward so let's take a look at how these components with this retaining pin go together here this is a maybe not a dry fit but so you can see the shape of the cutout here in the spring uh, clip and one of them goes there the other one is gonna be going like so make sure that the spring clip is seated on both halves and uh, you can see a hole here that is gonna be looking like with the pin going through both the brake pads and the retaining clip just like so threaded in place so turn this is turned and it's going to catch uh, the uh, threaded part here is going to catch a threaded part inside the caliper body so this is how they should look like when they are assembled together the uh, you can see that there's a little bit of gap the placement of the pin is such that this spring clip doesn't sit directly on the brake pad just just like just above it like so because that's where the hole lines up and that's how it's perfect yes so I hope this makes sense let's mount it 
So I've got this brake pad, brake pad and spring clip sandwich in my hand and when it's correctly oriented, so right side is gonna go on this side and when it's correctly oriented, it is gonna go in with a little bit of fiddling like so fairly easily yes and it stays in place like so and now i can go ahead and put the retaining pin in so nothing is falling on the ground and it's not chipping or breaking or cracking now the brake pads are held in place by the retaining pin you can see one end there you can see the pin between the brake pads there in the middle head of the pin is here you could if you're bicycling in wet weather a lot put a anti-seize compound on this brake uh, retainer pin so once it's because you can see it's being turned into its place more and it's extending more on this side so so that it doesn't seize because it's a steel pin and this is an aluminum body and these similar metals will have an electrolytic corrosion uh, happening between them in wet environments so to prevent that you might want to put an anti-seize compound on this retaining pin and on this tiny little clip that goes on the end of that pin so i tightened this retaining pin and I'm gonna put this safety clip on it depending on your manual dexterity this might take whatever length of time so this is how it looks like it kind of freely is able to rotate that's good and this is how it's assembled perfectly from the front it's got enough gap for the uh, I'm just gonna show you with the screwdriver here just like so this is where the brake rotor is gonna go in i'm gonna spread the brake pads a little bit like so so i have maximum space here i'm not gouging out dishing out and destroying the brake pads with that screwdriver i just i just made sure that they lie flat against the brake pistons that's all i did okay now i can grab my wheel and mount it so moment of truth coming up here let's see how the wheel fits here in this space so far so good nice it went in without a problem it's dragging a little bit but of course it's gonna need its axle which goes in from the brake side and let's tighten it a little bit might as well tighten it properly there and let's hear it so far so good there's obviously enough space there for the brake rotor let's pump the brake a few times all right the brake drags ever so slightly let's look at it from from here yeah you can see this light there so that side is not dragging so this side is dragging ever so slightly uh, it's basically imperceptible so this is good it's i'm gonna need to bed in the brake pads so uh brake sensibly knowing that the uh that the shape of the brake pad is gonna have to take up the exact shape of the brake rotor so that's going to take some braking time not going time forward braking slowing down so i'm not saying pick yourself the biggest hill and drag the brakes all the way down to the bottom of the hill but some so it needs some braking time to bed in the brakes yeah this any amount of brake drag i might have is it's pretty imperceptible Okay, so I'm gonna bed in my brakes sensibly, uh, like so. I'm gonna need a little bit of braking distance for that. And then check it. I should not be needing the brake caliper to be recentered on the brake rotor after the brakes 
being bedded in it should work the same wheel goes back in the same spot over the same brake caliper everything should line up fine